Crescent Lodge. Beautiful, deep, clear lake on the Olympic Peninsula, Washington State. I like to come here once in a while throughout the season whenever I can. Beautiful scenery. Lots of subjects to paint here. I'm looking for something that immediately grabs me, that makes me want to paint. It's going to be sunny and hot today, so I want a place where I can be mostly in the shade. This is a lovely view, but I'm going to be exposed to the sun very quickly here. The sun's going to keep traveling to the west and come out of those trees and throw this little gravel bar that I'm on into the sunlight. I could possibly get a little closer. I want to explore a little more too though. I want to take in the views around this park, around Lake Crescent Lodge. This is really pretty right here. I like that little copse of trees, moss covered trees standing on that little gravel bar and the brilliant color water right behind it. I especially like how this water flows through shadow into sunlight. It's really deep ultramarine blue in the shadows here and really vibrant cerulean blue when it goes out into the sun. That's really gorgeous. Shadow's going to move on that pretty soon though, so I'm not sure if I'm going to get that into a plein air here. I may have to do something like that in the studio. Crystal clear little Barnes Creek. Some beautiful old trees in here. Some of these fallen nursery trees are just massive. This location has some definite potential. There's this gorgeous little inlet, which will be in shadow for a while, which will be interesting to paint. There's also a shadow here I can stand under. There's this beautiful old fallen log with some interesting shapes. I could maybe move that into the painting. There's this direction as well, which adds some little cabins, some boats on the shore. I could add those for some interest. There's also the shadow falling on that vibrant water. 
And the view across there is just gorgeous as well. There's several layers. There's this foreground fallen log with the interesting branches, the shadow on the vibrant water, and then several layers of distant hills. Take a couple snapshots on my iPhone and see what really jumps out to me on a, on a small scale. That's a good way to help make a decision if you're struggling with too many potential views. Take a couple snapshots with your iPhone and if it jumps out as a little thumbnail on your iPhone, chances are it's going to make a decent painting. The looking at something at a small scale kind of boils it down to the big shapes, the major elements. That's a gorgeous old backlit tree there as well. Here's the scene I'm going to paint. I'm really drawn to the shadow pattern on this bank of trees and on the water. I'm drawn on I'm really drawn to the difference between the sandy shallow area and the deeper water. The color of the water gets really intense. I think I'll use a little bit of phthalo blue where it makes that transition just to make that pop. I also like this little copse of birch trees standing out on that little gravel bar. And then the blue stripe, really beautiful cobalt blue, high value stripe of water across the lake and then the distant hills. I think it'll be fun to really gray down and make the value, the key of that distant hill really high. I think I'll go with a portrait orientation and capture more of the sunlight and shadow pattern on these trees that way. All right, I'm gonna get set up and get started. I've been on a road trip out around the Olympic Peninsula. I've got my paints laid out on my palette, but they've kind of dried and hardened, so I need to take a little time and scrape off the palette and maybe lay out some new colors. Looks like they're having a blast. Well, it's a beautiful day here. There's no wind. I've got a nice place with, I think, some stable shade. So I'm going with an 11 by 14 inch panel. I could probably go bigger, but I've got a little bit of a drive home today. I'm going with a Gorilla oil primed linen panel. Those are pretty inexpensive and pretty fun to paint on. The one thing I don't like is that they're paper backed, so I have to do something a little better than that. Um, to frame them and, and put them in a gallery. All right, I'll give you a quick rundown on my palette. I've got the artist turpentine here, running a little bit low and it's running a little dirty after a few days on the road, painting out of the same kit. Got some liquid, ivory black, cold gray, titanium white with a little bit of alkyd so it dries faster. Cerulean blue, cobalt blue, phthalo blue. I'm going to reserve this just for that glowing, almost fluorescent blue in the deeper water. Ultramarine blue, sap green, burnt umber, burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, cad red, cad yellow. This is Windsor lemon. This is Gamblin radiant lemon. And yellow ochre. And this is just a little bit of lavender that's still nice and wet that I have from the tulips I painted. Start with my trusty old Utrecht bristle brush. I've got a panel and portrait orientation with my one-third lines. I've got the rough composition I want on my phone with also the one-third lines shown. I have a video, I'll link it here and in the description below showing how I put those one-third lines on the photo on my iPhone. I'm not able to put the bank, any of the banks, on either one-third line. So I'm going to go just a little above that for this closer bank of trees. That'll have the 
lower lake shore going off at kind of a shallow angle. I don't want it going off right at the corner, so it'll be right above that. Of the bank of trees coming out here, and then going up, and then back. So we'll put that little copse of birch trees right at this point, this intersection line. Actually, no, it won't. It'll put that little bank of birch trees reaching up to this point. So I'll start by toning the pan off. I'm going to go with cobalt blue for the sky, lemon yellow for the background mountains, cad yellow for the bank of trees, and burnt sienna for the, the water, and then a little bit of alizarin crimson for the foreground beach. I don't think I need to do a sketch today. I'm not doing any really detailed drawing, so I think I can get by with just the wash. Developing the turpentine wash, I'm just kind of letting the turpentine and slight amount of paint create interesting patterns on the panel. I'm not too married to, I'm not too religious about sticking to the composition I have on my iPhone. Rather, I want to see something engaging and that I recognize in the scene in front of me. After I get the wash mainly in, I'll take a smaller sharper brush and evergreen with a little bit of turpentine and wipe away the lightest lights just to firm up the value pattern. I'll add a little I'll add a little bit of dark paint as well to firm up the darker areas. Then when I mix the final paint, the final colors, I can refer to those values and go a little bit lighter in the light areas and a little darker in the dark areas, but try to stay kind of close. That really minimizes the the range, which I think can make a more interesting painting. Now I'll mix up some pools of color, a little bit of clean blue for the sky and for that middle ground streak of cobalt on the water. I'll clean my palette first with just a little bit of Gamsol, put away the artist turpentine so that that first initial sky color is real clean. I don't want it muddied. Then I'll march forward. I'm going to keep the background hills really high value, higher than what I'm actually seeing. My eyes, when I look at that background hill, they adjust and they really they really exaggerate the value range. In the painting, I want to minimize that value range. It's called compression of value. So I'm going to have just one step darker than the sky. So a two maybe on the 
two or three on the value scale out of ten. And then I'll march forward. This is a popular spot with the kids on their little boats. I don't blame them. Beautiful place. All right, I've got a few colors mixed up. I've got a real clean blue for the sky and then a slightly lavender version of that. I just think sometimes adding one hue over in the sky with a vertical pattern, something that Clyde Aspenvig and some others do and it just brings the sky to life instead of being a flat plane. I don't want to overdo it, but just a little bit. Also, as I get closer to the hills, I may add just a little bit of white. A touch of my burnt sienna cad yellow mix to warm it up and lighten it up right as it comes to the mountains. And for the mountains, I've got three colors mixed up. I've got a shadow green and a sun green, and I'm going to try to just use those two and not not do anything more than that. Keep it real simple and real soft brushwork, no hard edges. And I also have a lavender shade mixed up that's just about the same value as the shadow side of the trees. When I look out at the far river bank, some of those shadows, especially as they recede in the distance, have a beautiful soft lavender effect. So I want to capture that and see if it works in the painting. The shade is really nice to stand under, but it does make judging color and value difficult. So you can either carry your palette knife with a little bit of paint out into the sun, where some sun is hitting it to judge the value. Or what I tend to do is just compare it to the white on my palette and the black on my palette for value, and to compare it to the other colors that I've mixed. And I like Mark D'Alessio, I tend to do the sky first and then try to key the rest of the painting off the sky. So if I keep a little bit of that paint on my little side palette, I can hold my knife up against it and judge value and get an idea if the color is going to be in harmony or not. Another way to control harmony is to stick with the colors that you used in the initial wash. So for the initial wash, the predominant colors are cad yellow and burnt sienna. So if I manage to add just a little bit of that to almost every mix, then the painting will, has a better chance of being in harmony. Now it's difficult to add cad yellow or burnt sienna to the sky. If you add burnt sienna to the sky, you can gray it down like it's a cloudy day. So I'll avoid it there, but everywhere else, every other blend, I'll try to use more of those colors. All right, now I'll mix up a little color for this water in the sun and in the shade, and also for the trees, the near trees in the sun and the shade. And I may go ahead and mix up the colors for the foreground bank as well. Got some colors mixed up now for the trees on the near bank. I've got some warm shadow, more green, rich shadow. And then this deep lavender, bluish lavender, same value. So all the shadows, this is as dark as I want to go on the painting, unless I put some much darker. I haven't extended my range. I could go darker than this with ivory black or by mixing my alizarin crimson, burnt umber, and ultramarine blue, or even phthalo blue. I could go darker than this, but I don't want to. I want to kind of compress the values. So I'll, I'll use these. I don't actually see much of this lavender shadow now, but earlier when I was here, when there was more shadow, this shadow pattern had more of this lavender on the bank. 
and even this foreground, the shadows on the foreground here had this lavender. So as things come closer, the chroma gets richer. I'm going to use this straight for the shadows on the, the bank here. And then as I go back, I'll blend it a little bit with the other shadow color so it dulls it down a little and maybe becomes a little darker. For the water, I'll use these same colors that I've mixed up for the trees as the reflection. So the far hill is going to reflect a little lower chroma, a little less contrast pattern of, shat of reflection. These birch trees with their white bark and their really light green yellow leaves will reflect a, a brighter reflection than this. But the reflection shouldn't be as bright or as high contrast of, as what it's reflecting. Same thing with the, the pool and shadow. I'll use these shadow colors and the colors I've mixed for the trees and the light in the, the pool of water. As I come over here, it gets almost to my harmony color. I just doled down maybe with some of this warm yellow. So I'm gonna bump up the harmony color over here, showing that underwater bank. Then I may need to mix up a little more of my sky blue so I can draw in some reflections here once I get the majority of the color in. And then I'll go with this background reflect color and add just a little bit of phthalo blue for right here to give that really rich, almost fluorescent glow of the deep water. And then I've got some foreground lake, shore, sand colors here, all warm yellows. I'm going to go with a big brush, as big as I can manage to paint this. I don't want to get real detailed. This is not the time to add a lot of detail. I can add a little detail in the center of interest area later in the studio. Here I just want to get the big shapes in. Well, here's the finished painting. As usual, I had a great time. I hope you can see it. It's pretty strong lighting behind it. 
fun place. Tons of kids coming out and swimming and boating. I think I'll put my shorts on and jump in. It's kind of gotten warm and that water looks really inviting. I'll take it back to the studio and take a look at it under some better light, touch it up a bit and throw it out on my website. As always, thanks so much for joining me. If you like these videos, please like and subscribe.